Hi everybody, I'm Heath and it's time for another unboxing and initial impressions video. This time we're going to be unboxing the Warhammer Fantasy role-playing starter set. This is from Cubicle 7 and I got this when I was at a convention. It's been a little while ago because I used to play a lot of Warhammer Fantasy battles when I was a kid. My brother and I built armies, painted armies, made the terrain, and then fought battle after battle after battle on the dining room table. But Warhammer Fantasy role-playing wasn't ever something that I had gotten into, but when I saw this sitting there, I was like, well, you know, I generally love to check out different RPGs and evaluate them and, and see how they're going and what kinds of things they do and how well they do them. And so I thought, hey, you know what, it's time that I at least check out the Warhammer Fantasy role-playing starter set. And so that's what I've got right here. I have no idea anything about it. So let's figure out what's in it and how good it is. I love RPG starter sets in general because they always come with neat stuff. Nice. Okay. Dice here. Here they are. It's a percentile set. Obviously, I don't see anything uh, unique or different for these dice as far as their function goes, but of course they are really cool as far as their design goes. But it looks to me like uh, just a really neat percentile set. Very thematic. One set. How about that? Oh, okay, so it's all packaged in here. So I got uh, in here, these are some kind of token. I've got different colors here. Maybe they're used to represent monsters or something else during the game. I don't know. Although I would suspect they'd want you to use some miniatures. <laughs> all right, let's see what's in here. Prepare to enter a grim world of perilous adventure. Read this first. So what's in the box? We've got the read this first. Okay, an adventure book, a guide to Ubersreich, maps, and character sheets. What is a fantasy role-playing game? You know, actually, I already really like this uh, sheet right here. This read this first, because I think we've seen in some of the other starter boxes that sometimes you open them up and you don't even know what the books are because they don't even tell you like on the back exactly what this book is like what am I picking up here or even on the front page so I think this is a really important addition to an RPG starter set this kind of just open it up quick reference for what you're looking at especially if you're if you are in fact brand new to role-playing now here we've got like what do I need how do I play what is a game master what do we need to get started if you are brand new to role-playing I think this is a very important section to put in here what am I looking at and then what exactly am I um, what do I need to do with this and even if you're not new to role-playing understanding what the books are and what you should be doing with them in order to play in that particular set I think that's really important so this is a, this is a win already over here we got reference sheets Oh, these are advantage tokens, so it tells me right here. See? Okay, that's nice. This is a set of tokens used to track your advantage. See combat reference sheet for what this means. There are six advantage tokens for each character and 13 for the GM. Okay, dice. Dice. The two dice are referred to collectively as a D100. Okay, the adventure book will explain what to do with them. We've got handouts are handed out by the GM according to the players, according to the text in the adventure book. One exception, this is the six rumors you have heard about. These should be given to each player before playing the game. And then the box lid. Warhammer Fantasy Role-Playing Starter Sets box is more than a pretty vessel to contain the other goodies. It serves double duty as a handy GM screen behind, behind which the GM can secretly roll dice and take notes. There is also a handy summary of some of the primary rules printed directly on the lid should it be necessary to make the screen stand the lid up facing the players and pop the base of the box in the lid to hold it in place. Hmm. Okay, so we do have some rules. So I guess there isn't actually a Game Master screen in here. And I guess that's okay. Some of the screens that I have seen come in the starter boxes, like the Dungeon Master screen in the Essentials kit, the Dungeons & Dragons Essential kit, and then also in the Harn one we saw, really aren't all that durable or much to speak of anyway. And so, uh, you know, I like GM screens that are nice and durable, and I've got lots of opinions on them anyway, and so I typically would like to go and get a nicer GM screen anyway than the one that comes in the box. But I suppose having one in the box, especially if it's useful, and that actually contributes to the Game Master being able to run the game more effectively, would be a good idea. But, okay, so I suppose that's how you're supposed to set that up right there. Okay, so that... Uh, how do I... I'm going to put these things... 
I guess I'll put them here. That way I can put them back in the right order in the box when we're done here. Oh, so this is the characters. Again, I love pre-generated characters. You know, I love pre-generated characters for lots of reasons, but especially in starter sets, but even for general role-playing. In today's world, when you're gaming with people who don't have a whole lot of time and you might be able to get together for two or three hour session, generating characters just isn't something that I want to do. I love having pre-made characters on hand because most people can find, if you've got a nice selection, the kind of character they want to play. And especially when I was playing Dungeons and Dragons with my nephew over the weekend for the first time, we didn't go through character creation. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to get him adventuring and killing goblins and orcs and everything like that as fast as possible. So we played the Dungeons and Dragons Essential Kit and I just handed out the pre-made characters to him and let him pick one. He picked a Dwarven Cleric and we were off. I bet uh, he had to pick spells, but I mean, we were fighting goblins fast and I think that's the way to go. So, okay, Human Soldier right here. I like that they've got a new kind of design too for the character folios. They do take up a lot of space on the table, I suppose. Human Witch Hunter. High Elf Merchant. Hey, you know, one thing I just noticed as I was looking in here is that we've got armor points, and we've got armor points for different locations on the body. And it looks like there's a D100 roll here for different locations. And that does tell me something about armor points on particular locations of the body. So it looks like we're going to have hit locations in this game. Human Wizard. Halfling Thief. Dwarf Slayer. Well, here we have a map. Ubers Reich and the Surrounds. Game Master Map. The Town of Ubers Reich and Surrounds. Game Master Map. It's on a card. It's on cardstock. The Duchy of Ubers Reich. Now, this may be like the player's map. Because it looks much more in-universe. And this must be the player's map of the town. I like that. Because if you just have the DM's side, I like being able to hand the players things. Conditions Reference Sheet. It seems like conditions are definitely a part of modern role-playing, and I really like that. In fact, there's a lot more that I want to do with conditions if I were creating a role-playing game. To me, they're extremely useful. An introduction to Ubers Reich and the Empire. Conditions reference sheet. Attribute and skills reference sheet. <laughs> Look, consume alcohol. Tolerate alcohol. <laughs> That's a character skill. Well, I mean, we got dwarves in here, and... Dwarves in the Warhammer world are definitely known for their consumption of alcohol, so there we go. I like that. That's funny. It's a skill. Tests reference sheet. So actually, lots of reference sheets for different topics here. Injury reference sheet. Wounds. Critical wounds. Regaining wounds. Well, you know, I always like to take a look at the combat stuff in here. So let's see. Let's see. Combat reference sheet. So what are we going to be doing here? Each character receives a turn to do something every round using dice to determine who gets hurt. Initiative. Compare initiative characteristics and act from highest to lowest. Turns and rounds. You have a move and an action on your turn. They can be taken in any order. It's presumed you are doing both at the same time, and you are encouraged to describe them as one combat maneuver. Once every character has taken a turn, a new round begins. Move. A move inv involves walking, charging into combat, or running. The GM decides how far you move during your turn. As a loose guide, you can move M times 2 yards when walking and M times 4 when charging and running. An action. An action involves figuring out what to do and then testing a skill to see if it's successful. The most common action in combat when trying to hit someone with, is with a weapon using WS for melee or BS for ranged, but any skill can be tested on your turn. Fighting. When you want to attack an opponent, you perform a weapon skill WS test for melee attacks or ballistic skill test for ranged attacks. Of course, it sounds a lot like Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Melee attacks are always opposed tests unless the defender has the unconscious or surprised condition. The defender uses their WS or dodge skill to oppose the attack. The attacker scores more SL than the defender. It's in a successful hit. Ranged attacks are dramatic, but unopposed if the character passes the BS test. If an attacker hits, reverse the attack roll. A roll of 25 becomes a 52 to determine where on the body the hit landed. Oh, that's interesting. A 1 to 9 head, 10 to 24 left arm, 25 to 44 right arm, 45 to 79 body, 80 to 89 left leg, or 90 to 100 right leg. The hit location is used to see if there's any armor protecting the area. That's interesting because that does prevent you from having to roll the die again. Okay, you hit. Now determine hit location. So the same die is actually going to determine your hit location. I like that. The attack deals an amount of damage equal to the test's SL plus the weapon's damage plus the attacker's strength bonus for melee attacks. This damage is reduced by the defender's toughness bonus plus the armor points in that area of the body. Okay. Any excess is subtracted from their wounds. 
advantage. So that's what these, these are here. These are supposed to indicate advantage in combat. Combat has a momentum to it, and with success brings greater feats of glory. In Warhammer Fantasy role-playing, this is called advantage. And with each advantage token, giving the roller a plus 10 bonus to all combat actions, plus 1 advantage is gained for each of the following. Attacking an opponent with the surprised condition, spending your move charging headlong into combat, Defe defeating an important NPC, winning an opposed test during combat, causing damage to an opponent without making an opposed test. Okay, well that's interesting. And so then wounds, every character has a number of wounds. Loss of these represents cuts, bruises, and abrasions. Wounds are lost whenever you take damage. Damage is most commonly caused by combat. Each point of damage suffer you causes you to lose one wound. So if you suffer five damage, you lose five wounds. If you fall to zero wounds, you gain the prone condition, explained in conditions reference sheet, which you cannot move, remove until you have at least one wound. Worse, you stay at zero wounds. If you stay at zero wounds for more than toughness bonus rounds, the prone condition can become an unconscious condition and you pass out. If you would ever be reduced to negative wounds, you take a critical wound instead. Well, that's interesting. I like that. That sounds cool. To recover your wounds, you need rest or medical attention. You can attempt an average endurance test after a good sleep once per day and may heal wounds equal to the SL plus your toughness bonus. A character can perform a challenging heal test to further SL plus intelligence bonus wounds, although each wound loss can also be treated once per day. Critical wounds. Some blows are so terrible they cause critical wounds. These occur in the following circumstances. If you are reduced to negative wounds, suffer a critical wound instead and set your wounds to zero. If an opponent rolls a critical hit, Further, you also suffer extra wounds as detailed in the crit column. When a critical wound is suffered, roll 1d100 and consult the critical wounds table to determine what happened. Blah, blah, blah. So we got different gash, gut blow, low blow, winded, bruised, torn flesh, cracked bone, gaping wound, painful cut, fractured bone, flinched muscle, crippling wound, shattered bone, ruined, or torn apart. Ooh, you are hacked in two. Your top half lands 1d4 feet in a random direction, and all nearby characters are showered in blood. Whoop. Well, that's not good. Hey, I like the combat reference sheet, though. I was wondering, you know, how do you get into this, and, and what actually is this game like? So having these reference sheets, and especially the combat one, because that's often what everybody wants to know about, that's kind of neat. So here we've got the adventure book right here. We won't go into that in detail, because there are spoilers, I'm sure. So many games to play. This book is a soft cover, uh, perfect bound book. So the guide to Uber's Reich. So I guess this is all about the setting, kind of like a mini world book for the game master. It does bring back all kinds of memories of fantasy battles, Warhammer fantasy battles. Here's that handouts, rumors you have heard. One to three rumors you have heard. Oh, this is handout one, handout two, handout three. Maybe you're supposed to cut these apart. I don't know. Rumors you have heard, rumors you have heard, handout seven, going shopping. So what's on offer? That's nice, because I, I liked being able to just hand the players something to reference if they're going to be shopping or something and they need to buy equipment, so that's nice. And then looks like yep, an insert of advertisements of other games. Okay, uh, let me get this. Well, I think that's pretty cool. I'm already interested in it based on just what we read about the combat system. And I'm glad that it has that quick kind of guide in it. I want to know more about it. Has anybody out there played this game? What do you think about it? If uh, you want to, let us know in the comments section what you think and if it's worth getting into in a deeper way and what its best parts are and, and what its worst parts are, what you like, what you don't like. I would like to know. It's certainly a world that I've done a lot of gaming in. If you have enjoyed this video, please go back to my channel. I've got a whole bunch of other videos there on tabletop gaming, on fantasy, even action figures, and I organize it all by playlists. So just go over there, check out the playlists, and get into the kinds of things that you're interested in. I look forward to seeing you in another video, but until then, happy gaming.